Welcome to P3, I'm Randall Mark. This is the show that explores the fascinating people, places and perspectives that make up our world. On today's show, we talk about the connection between the mind, the body and the spirit as it relates to having deep, meaningful relationships. I bring a Swami who's now a relationship expert in the studio to talk about that connection. And later on in the show, I explore the ins and outs of harness racing and learn how to win big at the track. Stick around, it's going to be a great show. There's a strong connection between our body, our mind, and our self. Therapist and consultant Gary Bellow has been studying that relationship for nearly 40 years. Drawing from Eastern meditation practice and spirituality, he currently travels throughout North America with his wife, teaching people how to have deep, meaningful relationships. He joins me in the studio. Welcome to the show, Gary. It's, a, it's an honor. Uh, we're, we're matching, and you're know, clearly I very know. comfortable. <laughs> I, I should try that. That's quite a, quite a move you got there. Well, your hips have to be open, but if you can do it, it's, it's very comfortable. Very good. Now, now I, want to, I want to hear a little bit of your story, because uh, you used to be a Swami, mm -hmm. and, uh, which is uh, you know, an elevated uh, teacher, instructor in, in yoga. Well, not so much things. elevated, but a Swami is someone who has come to the realization that they want to know more about themselves and their connection to that which is greater, the source. Okay. So swa in Sanskrit is kind of knowing me, knowing self. Right. Yeah. And then you move now. You, I mean, you're, you still have all that training and all that understanding. Yeah. Now you apply yeah. that into relationships. Exactly, yeah. Um, for seven years when I did the real classical traditional teaching and, and studies, opportunity to really understand and practice meditation, yeah. hatha yoga, vegetarian diet, all of those things. And it brought me to a place where I realized how important it is to be comfortable in myself and then go out and share that with others. So that's what okay. those years did now, for now, me. Now, see, most people, they go, yeah, yoga's neat, something neat. You practice at the local club. You do some breathing. Right. But you're, you're right. talking about something far deeper. You're talking about a way to engage the world and engage yourself that has a connection to relationships. Can you explain that connection? Sure. Um, where yoga is now is, is wonderful. I'm really enjoying the new kind of way that yoga is um, moving into the Western culture. When I studied, though, I studied from the more traditional Indian yoga, so my teacher, Swami Satchidananda, was an Indian Swami. And so yoga means to unite, to bring together. So we have our physical body, yeah. which your show is all about, right? Yeah. So your show is about the physical body and the mind and the relationship between the two. So as you work with your body, what you realize is every moment, your body is representing your mind. And also the reverse. If something's happening to your body, it affects your mind. Give me an example. Okay. Um, if you're feeling... Um, you wake up in the morning, yep. right? You're coming to the show, and you wake up in the morning, and you look in the mirror, and there's lines under your eyes, or you just had a late night, and you're feeling tired, and you're looking, and you go, oh, my goodness, and you feel deflated. Okay. So your physical body, your brain, your immune system, the endocrine system, is all going to congregate around that thought. And thus, therefore, your energy is going to drop, and depending on, of course, your particular body style, right. it'll have a reaction to it. Uh, so again, when we're learning this stuff, we're learning through brain, brain science, the connection between the thoughts mm -hmm. and the patterns we have in our, in our right. thinking and the actual physiology of our bodies and even the physical patterns in our brains, aren't we? Yes, all the time. And therefore, everything that goes on in the mind is influencing the body. So when I look at someone's posture, I can tell what the contents of the mind are. Really? Not that I'm reading their mind. I'm not right, doing that right. at all. No, but you're saying the, a lot about how people sit, interact, reveals a lot of what's going on. Tremendously. I have a system that I develop called Body Talk, where I do a body analysis. And in doing that body analysis, I will find the basic core belief structure of an individual just by looking at the structure of their body, the posture of their body, and then the moment-to-moment -moment changes. Really? How, how does that affect, in, I mean, obviously you and your wife work with relationships. How, yeah. A couple comes to you and presents with, our marriage is falling apart, we've been together for 12 years, we've got kids, we, uh, we, what to do? Traditional, the, t traditional talk therapy would be, well, well, let's talk about communication, these right. kind of things. Right. What do you do differently and how do you incorporate spirituality and meditation to help a relationship? And that's a beautiful question. I mean, that really puts, puts it right into what we do. Relationships, which is interesting because when you think of the word relationship, I would say, as you just did, you immediately think of a partnership. Yeah. When we work with relationships, my wife and I, we're working with, first, the relationship being your relationship to yourself. So what is your relationship to your body? Are you comfortable, uncomfortable? What is your relationship to your personality? Are there areas where you're self-critical? Are there areas where you feel overinflated? Are there areas where you're just totally okay with who you are? 
So we explore with individuals, and certainly with couples. In the seminars, we do a number of seminars that are for individuals, others that are for coupleship. But it's always, what is your relationship to yourself? Are you comfortable? Are you uncomfortable? How does this, how does, how do you move out of this, um, the idea of it just being a little, you know, a faddish self-help kind of thing, where it's like, make sure you love yourself there, fella, and your, everything will be good. How do you move out of that kind of? Yeah, well, for some people, that kind of a simple message is important. And there's many people who will benefit from that. Our message is a little different, though. It's, we, you have to know what's going on inside of yourself. For example, if you have what we call an issue activation, if something happens inside of you and you get hit, someone might say something, and out of the blue, you don't even realize it, but all of a sudden you, you feel reactive. Reactive, yeah. perfect word. Yeah. You get reactive. If you're not used to your reactive side, then pretty much you're always kind of standing back and protecting yourself. If you know your reactive side, yeah. if you're comfortable with the part of you that's not perfect, meaning specifically what you believe about yourself, yeah which we help people explore in a very positive way, then when you get reactive, you know how to relax around it. And, and is this kind of comfort with the self, does that get achieved by learning the meditation practice, learning to kind of go inside your mind and begin to quiet it? Is that, is that the start of knowing yourself? I wouldn't say it's the start. I would say it's the tool that allows you to start. Meditation is a calming of the mind, a clearing of the mind. Yeah. When the mind clears, what happens is you're left with yourself. So if your mind is clear, you can then see when you have a reactive thought. If your mind's clear, you'll respond accordingly or appropriately when a situation comes up. Wow, interesting. I want to take a quick break, Gary, but uh, when I come back, I read this study about monks and their, uh, I think it was Buddhist monks, and how they have the, the highest level of happiness. Yeah. Because, yeah. and, and they connected it with meditation. I'm sure you're aware of this. Oh, yeah, study. very aware of that. I yeah. want to talk about that because yeah. it's really interesting because meditation and happiness are deeply connected. So stick around. More with Gary Bellow when P3 comes back.